Psalms chapter 140. And we're going to pick up on a subject that we talked about last night. Which we see in this chapter. And the big nasty word starts with an S and it's called separation. And we got to realize God is serious about this. Because the church is not separated from the world today. Christians are not separated. Lot did not separate himself. Even when judgment came, he wanted to be part still and to go into this little city. And not being separated from those who do not love God is going to destroy your testimony. Even though the Bible says Lot was just. Even though you are a born again Christian. If you do not separate yourself. You are a loser. And by loser I mean you're going to lose rewards. Because all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. And we read last night in Psalm 139. You can get it on the audio and YouTube. That... You, the person, David, said, I hate the wicked. And I don't want to have anything to do with them. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Now here is a here is a psalm. Here is a song that you are praying to God. You are seeking God to help you get these people out of your life. Evil men, deliver me from. Preserve me from the violent man. There are all kinds of men out there. One are men that love the Lord and want to do right. There are evil men. There are violent men. There are men that are saved and make God sick. What man do you want to be? It's been quoted a couple times in the Bible. Let's play the man for Israel. Now, even if you are afraid, even if you are trembling, stand up and be a man. At least act like one. And we see a prayer which imagine mischiefs in their heart. I'm sorry. If they don't love Jesus, they don't love you. I'll tell you why. Because the Bible says God is love. If they don't know God, if they have not received Jesus Christ who is God they don't know what love is. And in their heart, they're plotting something. Behind your back, they are laughing at you. Some may even do it to your face. I like them. At least they're honest. Continually are they gathered together for war. And they'll be the ones that put the signs on the billboard, Thou shalt not kill. Look at their history. Monitor's Mirror, Fox's Book of Monitors. They don't want you, and they don't want your Bible, and they don't want your Jesus. That is an enemy. They are not to be your friends. 
your companions. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent and tell me that's God. And Revelation 12 says that old serpent, the dragon, uh, Satan. They speak of the tongue of Satan. That serpent is the one that caused all our problems in Genesis chapter 3, the tongue. And yea, that serpent knows what God said. And they'll throw scripture back at you. Adders poisons under their lips. Now adders is in the area. Or deadly snakes. Uh, there's a snake here in, in North America. It's got like a kind of rainbowish color. I forget the name of it. That's one of our deadly snakes. If, it, if this book was written in North America, it, it would be that snake's name. But being in the Middle East, being in the land of Israel, this is their deadliest snake. Sila. Sila. That's a musical rest. When you see Sila in Psalms, somewhere verses beforehand and verses afterhand, there is the second coming. We see a serpent. We see poison. Let's read on. Keep me, O Lord. That's an interesting two words. Keep me, O Lord. That means keep me. Take me. Don't let me be part of them. Here we go. From the hands of the wicked. That's a reference to the Antichrist. The wicked one. Not just wicked. The wicked. So now we're jumping off into the tribulation period. You know, the tribulation period, if you get tied in with the wrong men, you're totally damned. At least as a nation, if you say these group of people, we're going to help them out called Jews. And you get tied in Antichrist and his men, you get in, in tied to them, you're going you're gonna to be talked out of helping them. And Jesus is going to separate the goats from the sheep. And those sheep are the ones that help the nation. Preserve me from the, the violent man. That preservation. Put me into a container and seal it. Like you do with jellies. And if you were to read the jar of a jelly that says jelly, and if you were to read a jar of uh, a jar that says preserves, you would see a vast difference between the two, as I have done. We of the church age today, people who are born again Christians, we are sealed by God. And that seal will never be broken. Absolutely not. Preserve me from the violent man who has purpose to overthrow my going. They are not for your right. They are not for your well-being. They are out for self. Insurance companies are not out there to make you feel good and get better and to protect you. They are out there for cold, hard cash. 
in their own business, but that's what they're in the business for. People out there make you think that they love you. How many women are out there who have been in this plot? Oh, that guy just loves me, just, just takes care, and then they're standing there, they're a refugee. They're under torments of this one man called marriage. Pastor, what do I do? The Bible told you what to do. Separation. Marry only a saved man that loves the Lord and serving him. There's a church out there that, that they are bound in their people. And there's people think that that church loves them and cares about them and speaks of the tongue of the serpent. And yet they'll be turned into damnation if they don't come out. The proud. And remember, that has nothing ever to do with God. God attribute is never proud or pride. Never. Have hid a snare for me. That's a trap. Like a rope. That you step into it and then you're, you're hung up in a tree. The, uh, have hid a snare for me and cords. That's the ropes. They have Spread a net. You know what a net is. It's another trap. By the wayside. Now if you go scripture with scripture. There is a sower that plants seeds. And he says some of those seeds fall on the wayside. The wayside is not the walking path. But you're coming along and you see that snare. So you go off to the right or left. To get away from that snare. And there you are now in a net. So they have completely blocked the way for you to walk. And have set gins. That's another. That's not a drink. That's another trap. It's amazing how they call a liquor gin. And if you check the definition, you'll find out it's a trap. Sila. The Antichrist is going to do all he can do to stop the Jew. All he can do. It is his last seven years years to do as much damage as he can do Satan you do know that Revelation 12 says that when he is cast out of heaven he knows his time is short you better believe he's going to pull everything he can out of his hat read Revelation He even acts like God and talks like God and looks like God. Oh, a snare, a net, and gin. The Antichrist, the false prophet, and the dragon. The unholy trinity. I said unto the Lord. See law we read in verse 5. What does verse say? I said unto the Lord. Thou art my God. Imagine here he comes. Here comes the light. Thou art my God. There is the Messiah. As they're in Salopetria. But do you say unto the Lord, Thou art my God? Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. Hear me, Lord. 
I cry unto you, Lord. Because these people are out to get me. I prayed that prayer. O oh God the Lord, the strength of my salvation. It's not ours. But it's yours. As you're preserved, as you're sealed by God, it is your individual salvation, but yet it's God's. Because God did it all. It's God's container. It is God's Holy Spirit that's in us. But Stiley Hayward's salvation by Jesus Christ. Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. So you, you picture the battle helmet. Kept his head down low. Kept him protected. And that's also another, thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Do you know what happens to Antichrist's head? He gets an injury to his head, a, mort uh, a mortifying injury to his head that he dies. Grant not, O oh Lord. We're in a prayer now, and we are in a hymnal, the desires of the wicked. Ought we be, be better be praying that, that, that prayer today in America? Let's say the Lord tarries. I don't know how many years. Let's say the Lord tarries. Ought we not to be as parents and grandparents praying for this, for our children, that are in America's tomorrow, where, you know, one person comes up and says, well, I don't like that restaurant sign that says, bring in the church bulletin, you get 10% off. Okay, got to end it. Knock it off. Well, we want a sodomite uh, wedding cake, and that Christian over there won't make it. All right, you got to make that cake, and not only that, you got to go to classes on how to treat them people a little better now, you bad little whatever you are. Call yourself Christians, and you won't make them a sodomite cake. Hey, 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 in our religion, we don't like bacon. Take that sign down. Take that picture, that stuff down. And they made the restaurant owner take it down because a particular religion doesn't like bacon. Are we ought to be praying for our children that the wicked people of, uh, of America don't get into us? Because you know what the church is going to be if, if they continue to grow? Listen, one person now has a voice in America to shut everything down. Our church in Deland, Florida now has a guy who's running for office. If his voice gets by... They're going to fight the church about holding signs on the street corner, which is a constitution right. But he'll do all he can if he gets in office, I assume, to fight. We ought to be praying to God for our children. As long as you're going to tarry, Lord God, please let the wicked not get their way. Let them get their way when we're all gone. When you come to get us, then let them have their way. Do you, as a family, in this house, do you people who are hearing this, this video or listening to this audio, if you are serving God, you are passing out track, you are doing what God wants you to do, do you realize wherever you can be, even the great states of America, that a van can pull up and grab you off the street and your family never hear from you again? And then torture for Christ will become real to you? And don't say, oh, it wouldn't happen in America. Wasn't, six months ago, wasn't there a news about a guy who held three or four women in his house captive for decades? And no one knew?
Grant not, O oh Lord, the desires of the wicked. You know what the desires of the wicked are? To, to get rid of God, to get rid of you, and do whatever. Listen, when you read the Babylonians, you read of the Assyrians especially, you know that? They were people of fierce. The Bible speaks about taking a pregnant woman, woman and ripping them open. The Bible speaks about taking children and throwing them off a rock. The Bible speaks about, oh, you love your, your child so much, you throw them into this god of a belly with fire. People are cruel. Where does it say in the, bomb, uh, in the Bible that, to make an atomic bomb that destroys cities in Japan? That when you see the footage that the clothes were literally just burned off the people. That man made that. Man made the electric chair. Man made the guillotine. The guy that made the guillotine also had his head betrayed off the guillotine itself. Those concentration camps in World War II against the Jews were designed by a man. And you want to have fellowship with those people. Oh, this person. No, you don't know what the capability that person can do. That you want to be friends. The imagination of man. Further not his wicked device. Device, bombs, guns, knives. It has been happening ever since Cain killed Abel. It was devised by Cain to kill his brother. And look at all the things. Torture has been designed by man. For all have sinned and come to show the glory of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. Better be careful. Least they exalt themselves. See love. Well, it's going to be one that's going to exalt himself. As for the head, you got to mark head in the Bible. Where did Goliath get his wound? Wasn't there a king, I think it's Abimelech, I'm not sure about this name, but isn't, wasn't there a king that a woman cast a piece of milestone and fell down and cracked his skull? Wasn't one of the body parts of Jezebel left a skull? And when that head, go back to Genesis 3.15 and read the prophecy, that head is the Satan, is the serpent. The feet are the Lord Jesus Christ, not Mary. You say, why do you have to say that? Because there are pictures of Mary who's standing on the serpent. But you know the truth. They exalt themselves. They will make happy, make pride of their life of all the torture and all the all the things that they've done to people to ruin their lives. That's in the White House today of America, USA. The President, the Senate, and the House are up there in Washington, D.C., and nothing but to destroy our lives and lie to you every time they, they, they go to vote in office that they love you and they want to do everything for you. As for the head of those that compass encircle me about, Surround me. 
You are surrounded by the wicked every day as you live as a Christian. There are many that go the broad way, few that go the straight gate. Let the mischief of their own lips, lips, cover them. Satan's word will get him and will condemn him. His lips since Genesis chapter 3. The Bible speaks in Genesis 1, God spoke. Amen. Glory to God. Let there be. God speaking to himself in the Trinity. Let us make man. Do you know the next one that speaks in your Bible? Satan. Genesis 3. Let burning coals fall upon them. Ouch. Think about them out, out in the backyard in a barbecue pit, laying down as you put burning coals over them. Let them be cast into the fire. How many of you want to be baptized in that fire? How come you don't want to be baptized in that fire, but you want to be baptized in the, in the, in the spirit and the fire that John the Baptist talks about? Why is this fire bad and that fire is good? Fire is fire. Into deep pits. You call it a, what do you call it today? You call it a barbecue pit. Uh, the King James 1611 Bible. Thank you very much. That they rise not again. That has to be hell. Because once you're cast into hell, you're never going to come out of it. You're never going to exalt yourself. And you're never going to get any higher than worm. Where their worm dieth not. <clears throat> Let not an evil speaker of the house. I mean speaker be established. Let not an evil speaker be established. And I can think of some evil speakers right now that are talking with religious titles given to their name. And they ought not be speaking. There are people that are speaking out of pulpits in churches worldwide that are evil speakers. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. What? Look at that. Evil against the violent. They're not only happy going against God's people, but they're going after each other. What do you think the world's going to go after when the church is gone and Christians to be picked on are, are no more? You think they're all going to get in this big love feast and orgy? Let's say you're a Christian, and by chance you are a, what can I say? In your company, you have a good standard. I don't mean we're a man. And you got a good spot in a company, and it's a coveted spot. The rapture happens. You think Fred, George, Betty, and Tom, and Eric, and all them, think they're going to say, oh, why don't you take that spot? Oh, no. Listen, when you're in the time of the wicked, the time, it'll, it'll be murder for that spot. You'll be blood. If they're against you, they're against each other. The whole world's in competition. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted, those that love him, all those that live godly in Christ Jesus. Maintain. He'll take care of you. 
He'll give you food as you need. He'll give you water as you need. He'll give you substance that you need. Listen, you may not be able to go to a hospital. You may not be able to go to a dentist. You may not be able to afford this. You may not be able to afford that. But God will make tain of you. God will take care of you. God will bring you in and say, you're at your 3,000 mile checkup. Let's check everything out. Let's get everything going. Let's get all your fluids. Let's get you going. Listen, when you read about a person that walks up to a faggot, I mean a burning stake, and they're going to be burned for the word of God, and they walk up to that singing a hymn, God has maintained them. You just don't go walking up to uh, your torture device singing praises to God. You don't go walk up to your executionist that's going to take your head and say, Listen, buddy. Take your hand and put it on my heart. Now, if my heart is not beating more than yours right now, you don't have to believe in my God and Savior. That is someone who's been maintained. That is somebody who's a separatist. That is somebody who's doing. That is someone who's praying. That is somebody who's reading. That is somebody who loves the Lord. And that is somebody who's next to God. Maintain means to keep up, keep clean. There was a time we used to call a maintenance department. When there was a spill on the floor, they would come and clean it. If that switch on the wall was bad, they would come and replace it. But Christians in their non-separatist movement go to shrinks. And Christian counselors and, and Christian radio. And that's not going to work. You need to go to God. And then see if God wants you to go to a doctor. Jesus said, yeah, a doctor is needed. But do you go to God first? There have been times in my life I went to the Lord. I'm having a situation. Lord God. Do I go to a doctor or do I not go to the doctor? I don't know what this body's doing to me right now. You do. And I'm still here. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. That's not the lies to see in church age. Do they say they're poor? And what does it say? What does it say? It says right of the poor. Do you know what Laodicea means? It's rights of the people. They don't get their help from God. They get their help from the people. And Psalms 140 verse 12 says, Get your help from the Lord. The Jew in the tribulation period, the only way he's going to get out of that great tribulation, get out of the time of Jacob, is God maintains them. And he's going to maintain a place for them in Revelation 12, a place prepared for them that he's going to feed them, he's going to give them water, and he's going to protect them from the wicked one. And all those people that are against him, Listen, that Jew in the tribulation period, according to Psalm 140, everybody's going to be against them. Including probably Jews. And you're going to come up with an artificial mark and you're going to defeat Satan and then win the game. I don't think so. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. He had a name that no man knew. On his vesture was a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Acts 4.12, there's no other name given by men whereby they must be saved. That name at the end of the tribulation period for those Jews will be 
Jesus. Hosanna! And they won't be yelling, crucify him a few weeks after. You better believe that. And they won't put a crown of thorns on his head. He's already got crowns. The upright shall dwell in thy presence in the millennium. Them Jews that finally trust the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten of God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish. Those Jews will be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. That any Jew today were to do that, they would wipe you off the face of the planet. They would wipe you out of the job. They would wipe you out of the family. They would disinherit you, get rid of you, and have nothing to do with you if you were a Jew to trust the Lord Jesus Christ today as your Savior. And yet there will be the remnant to a place God has prepared, Revelation 12. And as they run out of their city on their own merit, not a captivity, you'll be brought back in their city by their king, by their Messiah, to be forever with him. Because they left the wicked and ran down to where God wanted them. How many will not leave the wicked one? How many will not leave the, the evil men? And then when Jesus is caught. And when Jesus comes at the second advent and you are with the wicked. That sword that comes out of his mouth. Will condemn you. That's what it's all about. There are people who love the Lord and there are people who don't love the Lord. There is God and there is Satan. Man is a sinner. Oh Lord my God When I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble adoration And there proclaim 
my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul.